This conference will now be recorded. The time being 4.45 p.m., I'd like to call the meeting of May 13th, 2021 to order. Before we get started, if you are joining us virtually, please mute your microphone during the meeting unless you want to speak. Otherwise, background noise will interfere with the meeting. Because space is limited due to social distancing requirements, we are providing access to the meeting via telephone and the GoToMeeting platform. Members of the public wishing to attend this meeting via phone may call the following conference call number at 1-866-899-4679. Access code 817-026-717. Members of the public wishing to use the GoToMeeting platform may access the meeting remotely using your smartphone, tablet, or computer at, at global.gotomeet.me forward slash town of hyphen Tilton forward slash selectman. This information can also be found on our website at tiltonnh.org under meeting schedules and agendas, board of selectmen. Uh, time for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. I'll bring the minutes of May 6th to the floor. Yes, ma'am. Um, if we just correct them, that means these folks know, and then next week it's just meant that they're corrected. Under down at the bottom, it says, Do you mention the Hilton? Last sentence, Selectman Constantino voiced I had a concern that I don't want the Parks Commission to get the feel. That's the opposite of that opposite. So I would really like to send these back and get corrected and um, just listen to the tape. Is that a motion? I'll second that because Pat wasn't opposed to giving the field back. Oh, I don't recall that either. All right. Any other discussion? Do we just wait for any other discussion on the minutes or do you want to vote on? Just postpone. 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 We'll All right. The correction. All right. We'll postpone it. Or I guess do we have to vote or no? No. All right. Oops. I need Joe and Mike second. Joe withdrew a second. All right. So I would like to, not quite sure how to put it, um, make a motion to unseal a portion of the uh, May 6th, 2021 non-public minutes that deal with the promotion of um, interim Lieutenant Abe Gilman. And intern police administrator Jeannie Forrester. It's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? No. All those in favor say, is it a roll call vote? 
for that. No. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those nay. Motion carries. And uh, Lieutenant Gilman will be sworn in uh, later this evening. Moving to the next uh, on the agenda, DPW Director Kevin Duvall, transfer station fees. I neglected to print them out. Hello. 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 How are you? Oh, good, how are you? Great. Did you all receive the list? that I generated? I did. Okay. That's what I'm looking at on my phone. I forgot to print it, so. Oh, okay. I have some questions when you. I have some questions too. So I'll let you go first, because ladies. Oh, it's fine. I don't care. It doesn't matter who goes. Um, on the construction and demolition material, mm -hmm. sixty-five dollars a cubic yard, mm -hmm. three dollar minimum. How do I? How do I know what I'm going to be charged? If I if I bring if, down. If this is approved. Yeah. There will be a sign. Going forward, we have to communicate all of this to the residents. A minimum is when somebody brings a handful of stuff and wants to throw it into the dumpster. The, the cubic yardage is when somebody brings in a half a truckload, a full truckload, a truck and trailer, the large amounts. Yeah. And that's when the attendant will make a judgment on a specified scale that we will set forth on a sign so that we can communicate to the residents how we're going to charge for these items. So if somebody wants to bring in a toilet, it goes into the demo dumpster, there's going to be a $3 minimum, $3 to throw the toilet into the dumpster. It doesn't take up a third of a truck. It doesn't take up a half of a truck. Yeah. So that's how we're, we're justifying somebody to throw a toilet into the dumpster. We have to charge something. Where does where does it say that though here? Well, in, so, can, so that would be considered demolition material. Yes. So somewhere along the line, we'll have to make a sign. That, I'm sorry. No, no, you're you're okay. Didn't mean so, to yes, we will we will communicate all of the criteria around each charge. So th there's going to be a lot of signs generated for the transfer station instead of just the the very vague signs that are there now. And that's a lot of the issues that we're running into is that it's not well communicated. It's really, it's really not. So, but we have to start here. It's a, it's a place to start and then we'll yes. see what, you know. Yeah, absolutely. The, you know, when the word gets out there, see what questions it generates too. Mm -hmm. um, That was that was my main question. Just was like, how do I determine? I mean, if I bring a, if I take a, a trash can, or even like a fifty-five gallon barrel, mm -hmm. put it in the back of my pickup truck, which I don't have, mm -hmm. and fill it with, uh, you know, my deck, and you know, I can pull it up. I put it in the back of Scott's truck, and I pull up and I dump it in the, in the bin. Mm -hmm. What's the charge going to be? Well, at the time, the attendant will have to take a look. Is it a yeah. full can? Is it half a can? Is it, if you dumped it out, would it be a third of the truck? You know, because yeah. you might be in a small truck. Right. Um, so there's a lot of judgment that is put on the attendant at the time, yeah. um, whoever's watching the dump at the time. Uh, now, I'm hoping to streamline that by having just specific people work the transfer station. Um, to minimize the uh, wide range of judgment um, until until we have a, a full time attendant that just that's all he does or or she does is is the transfer station, which I see us going to eventually. Joe, 
Um, I anticipate resident pushback mm -hmm. on the, I'm guessing, part of how much to charge. Okay. If there's no criteria, I, I, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. How much is, uh, and maybe it's five bucks unless you got half a truck or, or whatever. And that takes the guessing out. Mm -hmm. Because I'm gonna pay three bucks, and John's gonna pay five bucks, and Scott will pay six fifty, and you know, and and maybe that's a overblown, but it mm -hmm. seems like there should be less guessing. Um, so the extreme, the extreme end of this is if we purchase a scale, and everything coming into the transfer station is weighed. You weighed in, you weighed out, and then you charged accordingly. We're that's that's seventy five thousand dollars for the, the the most basic scale out there, and they they range up to one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. I I did the research because I I was in thinking about maybe going that way to take the guesswork out of the attendant, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a large purchase. But you say that this is somewhat abused, particularly with the wood and the demo. Mm -hmm. And is there a way to curtail it with, are you gonna still include the coupon uh, program alongside would, of this? I would like to initiate the coupon program as well. In, so with these prices here that you have, mm -hmm. will that, have you tried to figure out um, if somebody brought in, uh, each one of these, what the cost would be in a dumpster, <clears throat> would would we profit or would we break even on a dumpster if somebody brought in these items on a weekend and you had to get rid of them? Okay. So how I generated these numbers mm -hmm. is I, I broke down basic cost of our dumping fees mm -hmm. and tried to estimate like on mattresses, how many mattresses would fill a dumpster. Yeah. Okay, I broke it down and I added a little bit of money. I don't, I don't wanna sp specify percentage, but like, let's say it broke down to um, $3 for a twin mattress. I added a couple of dollars for the next 10 or 20 years because I don't wanna go through this in five years, 10 years. I want to have something, a, a, a balance that would get us through to the next maybe 15 or 20 years. Now there, there, there is a lot of uncertainty going forward as far as how costs uh, are gonna be, but I, I, that can't stop me from trying to make a change now. <laughs> Am I making any sense? You are. I'm just, I know that we're going to get some pushback mm -hmm. on it. And I know that um, the wood, you know, it, either they bring in a 65 cubic yard or it's a $3 minimum. So if somebody replaces a couple of steps on their door, on their door, in front door, they have to replace it. It's, you know, those two, two pieces of wood that they have to bring to the dump, it's three bucks mm -hmm. to get rid of those couple of pieces of wood. Now, if it's clean and clear wood, meaning no paint, no no uh, varnish, no uh, glue or nails, they can dump it for nothing. They could, we'll make a pile separate for clean and clear wood. I tried to break it down at the bottom there uh, because currently we don't do that. All the wood goes into one dumpster and it's dumped as demo. Um, so that's a that's a change that we could make if somebody's willing to take the time to to pull the nails and to make sure that there's no varnish or, or paint or glue, then we can keep it separate and get charged the the lesser amount to get rid of it. So if I plane it before I bring it down. Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I did speak to NRA and they said that if we do take the time to separate out these items, that it will re reduce our cost dramatically.
Mr. Ruggles. So um, it, it's I, Kevin. I, I I like this, and when I saw it, I did a little bit of research, and it's right in line with their surrounding communities. I wonder, to Joe's point on on that one section, if mm -hmm. you know, even being able to give, um, even be able to give just a, a a basic sort of premise. So you know, half a truck bed would be approximately, mm -hmm. um, you know, to to, and what I'm thinking about is your attendant and your attendance friction that they're going to get because it's it's a little bit ambiguous there. So just trying mm -hmm. to just trying to to take away the the conflict that they might have. Um, if you define that out a little bit more, I would I'd love to be able to help them when they're having to do that. Right. So that that's the that's the one place where just for your guys' sake, mm -hmm. you know, because you know there's going to be well, I've only got a a you know, oh, this is only a quarter bed full, but you know, sure. being able to have that framework, well, I think, would help. If we take the time to design some nice signs, and I know pictures are worth a thousand words, <laughs> so if we could show in picture form what a uh, half a truckload would look like or half of a or a third of a truckload and what the projected cost would be that would be helpful for the rest resident um, and the types of materials we don't currently we don't specify what falls under the construction demo and um, in fact today we had to separate out some carpet because uh, it was missed somebody had uh, put some carpet into the C and D dumpster which actually needs to go in the MSW dumpster so those are the things that we're trying to uh, um, take care of now that's happening. But if we communicate where things actually are supposed to go before the people get to this transfer station, it'll be helpful and it'll help with their cost, what they expect to pay when they get rid of the stuff at the transfer station. John? So I was thinking, um... Uh, sort of what they do at airports. If your suitcase is a certain size and fits in this box, mm -hmm. it's that. If not, you got to check it and pay thirty dollars. So if you had one of our containers, our our barrels, mm -hmm. that you know how many cubic feet it is, mm -hmm. and say, well, you know, whatever you can fit into here. Oh, a that, visual aid. That's sure. fifteen bucks or whatever. Okay. You fill it up in there, and it's fifteen bucks or less than that, you know, or a portion of their, and that way there'd be no um, arguing, you know. Yeah, there'd be no question, yeah. okay. Or, you know, or some type of box, you know, like when yeah. you buy firewood, mm -hmm. this, and they a stack certain, it up uh, in a little square thing, mm -hmm. and this section here is $15 or $5 or something. Well, that, that was that, that, That's a great idea. That is a great idea. What about like the, the bucket loader or something? What's the cubic yardage on the, that? The, the bucket loader is two cubic yards. So, I mean, if you made it whatever the, that would equal out to, or if yeah. you just say one bucket is $63. Um, an eight-foot truck bed filled water level yeah. is two cubic yards. Yeah. But... Sure. Okay. So that would be one hundred and thirty dollars. Yes. For a, a full size a an eight foot truck, truck an eight foot truck bed if it's folded right to the to the rails. Yes. One hundred thirty dollars mm -hmm. for wood. A big truck. Yeah. Costs us money to get rid of it. Does it cost us that much money to get rid of it? Absolutely. More. John. So. People have options. They can take it over to 140 mm -hmm. and and um, yeah. bring it there mm -hmm. in a very a much more liberal uh, time period and stuff like that. How do our numbers compare to taking it there? Casella's facility in Belmont. Um, It was in my pack. I don't remember what the cost is for C and D, but it's it's almost double what we charge. Currently, currently, yes. In fact, Northfield currently does not accept C and D material, and they actually request their residents to take it to Casella. Um, the cost it's expensive to get rid of, and um, they just did away with it. A follow-up question on that would be: the next thing is, is people are, you know, I don't want to pay for these woods. I'm going to slip it right into my trash can. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, 
So we'll have to be more diligent. Or, yeah. yeah. Diligent so checking. With, yeah. With that. Um, yes. Oh, thank you so with much. the training as well as as long as we have Bernard doing it, ask them to be. Yeah. Okay. So uh, to go back to your Casella, uh, one hundred and sixty-four dollars per ton for the demolition debris. Um. A ton. Of, well, it depends on the. On the on what it is, it could be a ton. You know, a ton of of um, brick is going to take up less volume than a ton of wood. So that that's um exactly. I mean, when it's wet, we're paying extra to dump as well. So it's 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 a really fine balancing act that's going on here. Um, we, we, I am concerned with the roadside dumping and, and things of that nature, especially if we increase our prices. But we we shouldn't let that deter us from trying to um, adjust our prices so that they're so that the taxpayers aren't losing money on the solid waste. They really um, got to break even at least. I mean, at least, or... yeah, exactly at least break even. Go ahead, John. Um, so presently we budget for paying for some of this. Will that stay about the same or you think we'll go down? Or, you know, are we passing it more to the actual users by doing this as opposed to- I believe that it, it will uh, decrease our expense by taking in more revenue on this side of things, we can start to pay for other things and and, and actually decrease our, our cost. Cost that you, to these prices, break us even? No, it's, I added a certain, a little bit of a percentage, one or 2%, for future, so if in three years, if the prices continue to go up, we're still covered. Because in five years, I, I don't want to have to redo my signage and deal with price adjustments. I, I tried to add a little bit extra just to cover the cost of fuel of of the because the the hauling fees are go up. Um, once a year at least. Are we, are we seeing <clears throat> in significant increases in the future on hauling fees? I mean, that's where our our biggest expense is going to be. Yes. Um, the, the expenses are in the tonnage. And if we can reduce our tonnage by recycling more, then I think that we'll have a fighting chance with the cost. Um, which plays into a big, uh, another big uh, deal with the recycling and, and projected plan for that. Um, just to make you aware, I did reach out to an elect, um, JP Carter to get an estimate on running three phase into the property so that if we decide to do uh, bailers, that we will have some information to go on to start bailing our, our cardboard paper products, plastics, and um, actually reaching out to Hanover to uh, figure out an outlet for our glass as well. Because if we can take our glass out of the recycling, we can save money on that end as well. So th there's a, a lot of dynamics with this whole trash business. John? <clears throat> well, there's really sure. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I just wanted to, I just wanted you to know where I generated these numbers from. I took it from surrounding areas, um, like uh, Northfield doesn't charge for C and D, so I couldn't use them. So I, I took some information from Sanberton in Belmont. Um, but you know, I'll follow the board's direction with, with that. Uh, I didn't think that these numbers were unreasonable considering the surrounding towns. Um, um mr chairman yes make a motion to take and i'm not going to read every single one of them but uh to take the advice of the public works director and institute this transfer station. transfer what do they call it transfer base station price proposed price as written There's a motion. I'll second for discussion. Any other discussion? Oh, absolutely. Yes. I like that idea though. That that would be very helpful. And I would say that my my motion, I should have put it in there too. Uh it's not effective immediately. There has to be some kind of uh, education process going forward, I believe. What's the? They got to. They got to know. Mm -hmm. Right now, we've got the the sign down at Public Works. It says dump stickers will be enforced. You know what I mean? Um, give them fair warning, because this is the residence facility. Would be my my feeling. Well, you're aiming for June 1st for this or no? I, yes, I believe there we had to decide tonight to get the flyer in with the tax bills. Mm -hmm. Right. To get, okay, to we're get the all on the same way. page. So I'm sure. Yeah, yeah this absolutely. This is not a thing where uh, day after tomorrow you go no, down, no. man, it's going to cost you eight bucks. No, so no. June 1st? It's really whatever the board wants. Yeah. yeah. We can put in any date that we want. Do you want to exactly. make it less than a month? Do you have time to to educate the foot well, it's going in the newsletter so that's a net part of the education but yeah. also yeah. on the on the um the website would have to be updated we could put it on the message board mm -hmm. and if the message we board. had a flyer uh available to mm -hmm. hand people who come in there uh even if it hasn't affected them yet at least again sure you Passing know the people the who are, are apt to go down there will be informed mm -hmm. They hand it to them on Saturday and Wednesday. So is the effective date June 1st? What's, we're talking about We're that. talking oh, about that. Okay. We haven't, his amendment didn't include a date. Oh. Or his, his motion did not include a date and we didn't amend well, it. Well, we can decide on the date afterwards. Okay. Did, Kevin, does June 1st give you enough time, barring any major emergencies, et cetera, to get the signage that you'd like to have done? The sign shop is uh, running three to four weeks out. Okay. So in order for me to have a, a legit sign made with the price list, we're looking at um, July first. July first, which I'm okay with. That's more I I, yeah. I would yes. I would err on the more time right. than less time. Yeah, I think the more I think the great. more specific information you can have, and the then easier we can make guys. a separate. Uh, motion to that between okay. now and I don't even think we need a separate motion. We started when we started, right? Can't get the signs and and you know when no. we need is consensus on that. Yep. Yeah, okay. if the okay. motion passes, yep. if the okay. motion, if the motion. All right. Any other discussion on the motion to approve the post transfer station price sheet? All those in favor say aye. 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 I'm Larry, but I'm going to say aye. Opposed? I'm not supported you. Thank you, Pat. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. I, uh, one oh, more do thing. we have any other? Oh, wait. So we have some public on the line. Is there any public comment on? After we made the decisions? Well, yeah, we can go back and. Should we consider 
All right. Is there any public that would like to discuss? Uh, yes, I would. John Barrett, 94 right. Tilton Street, uh, 94 Winter Street. Sorry. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, Mr. Okay. Barrett. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting me make my comments or questions. Um, are there going to be any restrictions or fees for dumping leaves or brush? No. Okay. Um, now, as far as if if this goes into effect and, and there are fees, um, will residents be expected to pay these fees at the time that they drop off this trash? Currently, yes. All right. Is that going to be in cash, check, or credit card? Currently, we check, we accept cash and check. No credit cards at this time. Okay. And um, I guess my last question is, um, will we be able to, um, residents, be able to obtain a receipt? Yes. Okay. Um, and as far as the... Uh, one of the selectmen um, mentioned that there is a budget for some of this. Uh, do any of our tax money we pay go toward this? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, so the fees will be on top of that. That's correct. To offset okay. it. Okay. To offset it. To offset it. Okay, good. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate the. Uh, you're allowing me to talk. You're welcome. Thank you, John. You're welcome. You. You're welcome. We have some public here. Did I see your hand go up? Oh, okay. I saw it in slides. All right. Anyone else on the internet, on the live call? All right. Anything else for Mr. Duvall this morning or this evening? No, I have one thing I'd like to hand out. It's, oh. it's uh, kind of an itinerary of my projected Academy Street plan, just to give you a little bit of a heads up of how things are going to progress. Sure. We um, we did meet with the water department and the meeting went very well. Was that with sewer too? Okay. Was that with sewer department too? No, it was just the water department. Is sewer going to be included in on this um, project? Not on my end. Is it going to be before? So they're going to okay, thank you. come in on the project, and then you're going to finish the. You're going to start your work. So we're not going to have another Cedar Street exactly. fiasco. Okay, yeah, got it. Right. Yeah. Okay. I need one for each hand. Yeah. Hi. What's your projected starting date on this on Academy Street? Um, hoping July, July, between July and October, start to finish. Hopefully. And what happens getting, if we're we're coming to winter and there's the roads not done? Well, it's going to be a base like Cedar Street was. It'll be paved with a winter binder. Yeah. And um. Then paved in the spring. Exactly. Yeah. Kevin, just a question on the one way on Academy Street. Are you yes. it, are you talking about is that where are they going to be able to release one way or is it just going to be one direction? You know what I'm saying? Uh, one entrance, they, one exit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Which way? I'm flexible, whichever way you tell me to go. Oh. <laughs> it's always got to make this all good. It's all, everybody's going to like it. I would like to see it go from winter um, school street to um, pro Chestnut, exactly. Uh, Prospect Street. Prospect, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe? Uh, something that I almost forgot. Uh oh. Uh, is Cedar Street. There's a hole in Cedar Street. Yes, um, I was not happy when I was made aware of it. Uh, and and how did that come about? Did they have to go and get a permit from you or the town to it was dig a, through a town street? Is I was notified the night it was the issue was discovered 
and they uh, informed me that they were going to excavate the next day. It was a Saturday, I believe. And I checked it out that morning. Their system had failed. And um, yeah, I, I, uh, I addressed my issues with that whole situation. My understanding it was... Uh... I'm surprised you didn't hear me yelling, Pat. Well, I didn't. I know that. I felt it. What? Joe, Joe has a question. <laughs> what What assurances can we have, if any? Well, this is not going to be a hopscotch deal up Cedar Street. I, I honestly don't have the answer for that. I specifically said on Saturday, this entire road was undone for months. Why are we having an issue? And I was not given a good answer. I wasn't. They they shrugged their shoulders and threw their hands up. And and why did why what was the failure? The lateral pipe shifted on the main line. So how could that how could that have happened exactly? They had to excavate that one location to tie in the lateral. So why did it happen? Exactly. So the only thing that I could do was I told them to fix it and I gave them very strict parameters on backfilling the hole and repaving the patch. Which as of this morning hasn't been done. Yes. Well, it's been it done. Has. Oh, it has. Okay. Well, they were part way through. They okay. were, it was fixed okay. to the standard of what was it this morning? Well, I left for work at today. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And I was told today by one of the supervisors in, in Johanna that it was a frost problem that that uh, the lateral let go. Shifted. Shifted. And it disconnected. That's what I was told. All right. Okay. I got one more. All right. We have to move on, though, because we have. I still have one more question. One more question. Mr. Chair, have you spoken with the sewer department? Yes. What did they say? Uh, Johanna was there when I was there on Saturday. She didn't say anything. She didn't have answers for me. She just said she didn't know and that she was going to try to make it right. When was Dig Safe called? Dig Safe wasn't called. They were there Saturday morning. Dig Safe was there Saturday well, morning. Well, it was Mark Green on Friday evening, uh, and then on Saturday, uh, Liberty Utilities was there to mark the gas lines. Okay. If you look, there's spray paint indicating where the lines are. The water company didn't get notified until Monday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Great, and then I'll wash out the, that room. Okay. All right. Communications. All right. That's one of our lacking problems in the town. Thank you, Mr. Duvall. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Thank you. Next, Officer Liz Murray, moving the park. John. Oh, Simon. come up. Come up front. Come talk Talks to us. Oh, what is Wicked Fest? No. The question I have. So, Wicked Fest. You guys know about Movie Night in the Park, right? Yeah. Oh, that riverfront. So usually a headache. Yeah, you just need to make oh, sure it's like. Mic, it's usually a headache because the big machine I have with the big screen and it rips up the grass. So I want to move it to this field over here. I'm just looking for your permission. Um, we bought a 40 foot blow up screen this year that weighs 22 pounds. It's made of Oxford cloth. It's really durable and it's safe. And I'm just seeking your permission to use it this year out here. Um, Put movies in the park over here? Yeah. So, don't get upset. It's just an idea. <laughs> How do you know I'm upset? I uh, can read your face. <laughs> Interview school did that. Um, so, Eric Pru said that we could use parking out here at Tanger. Kevin said he put out trash barrels. It'll be neat and clean, and it'll be well taken care of. And it'll be easier to, for people to access. And they all sit on a flat plane instead of the riverfront park where they could sit up and watch the movie. Not everyone likes stadium seating, but yeah, that's a good point. Oh. Your blow up screen. 
something that would remain in place. No, so it has a blower, so every time I use it, I just put it up, take it down, it's like 20 minutes. I probably could, but usually we come into an issue with parking and sure. they don't want us to use Riverfront, the overflow because of past issues. So park commissions, commissioners don't want you to use Riverfront because of issues with the grass and stuff? Yeah, usually they give me a hard time, say that I rip up the grass and stuff. You personally? Equipment. <laughs> <coughs> Jeannie? Yes, I was just curious if Officer Murray could tell us um, how many, what, you know, what is, how many months, how many weeks, what are the hours of operation? How many people attend? <coughs> Great question. Great question. Depends on the night. Sometimes it can be 100, sometimes it's 300. Um, usually there's between three and six movies throughout the summer. It starts in June, goes through August. And it's on a Friday night? It is on a Friday night. I um, thought you were coming here to ask permission to have it because of the COVID. Oh, you, all right, a little ambiguous. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I got You just want to have it over there. Right. Yeah, that's all. I'll make her sweat a little bit. My, yeah. my only concern is we currently don't, we don't, I guess when is the park going to be ready for People do. Is it ready now? Is it is it done? Can people use it? Because we've we've haven't given it back to the parks department because it's a it's a construction zone. Right. So is it still a construction zone? Is it not a construction zone? We we project um, that, and I think I might have put it in my report that um, it's going to be we should be done with everything by the end of this month. And I, I don't know when or first, when is your first June event? First week of June. That might be cutting it close. Second week. Yeah. Hmm. John? Water parties? Sorry, what? Water parties or? Okay. So you go to Tango. Ooh, you, to you can't, you can't. You have to, you have to have something. Well, if Eric says people can go to Tanger, can't they just do that? So if I have to go, you're going to make me walk. Or can't they just come in here? All the way around. No. But you're saying to the Parks Commission, you can't have this. And now you're going to say to the Police Department, go ahead and do this. No, I haven't said it. I'm just... I'm just That's two separate issues. I, I think we would have an issue with the Parks Department if we haven't given the Parks Department the field back, because it is the parks department's purview to use the field but um mr chair i believe yeah. it's currently the selectman it is currently to use it is this field that field belongs to the town of tilton not the parks department you are correct john we did give permission for the skating over there this year Possible to get porta potties, you think? Or yeah, I think there would be, especially if somebody has kids, you know, and they yeah, want to no, they miss out the movie. Or handicapped. Get there. What do you do if you're handicapped? They have porta potties that are. Jeannie? They do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. Jeannie has a. Hand I actually rate. think, didn't, didn't uh, the Parks Commission already ask this board for permission to put a porta potty there in June? And didn't you say yes? Thought we did. They asked us for the park too. Yeah, they asked for the park, but since the park's not open, technically. Well, well, what I recall on it, I can go back and look at the minutes, but I recall they asked for permission to put a porta potty out in June, and you had said yes, because I remember at the time. I think at the time, we weren't sure what was going to happen, and they wanted to put it out there anyway. John. I don't think we ever said the park's not open. It's just... Well, the the parks department wants to hold events, and they they 
they had events planned. Right, and we haven't allowed those events to occur right. because they, asked, they could, and we said no. Yes, Bob Hardy did. I don't recall. I don't recall him asking any particular thing. He asked for the park. The, but they want the control of the park they because they, they have events they planned. Football field in. No, if they have they events, want they why have didn't events. They just say we have events. They sent out an email and asked I for the parks to come back. For parks because they had events planned for the June, July, whatever. You guys want to think about it? <laughs> so, yeah, give it give us a week. Question though, is the bathrooms at Riverfront Park gonna be open this summer? They are open now, I believe. Officer Murray, before you go, can you just run through us the, the pluses of using this space, the minuses of using this space versus Riverfront, just well, so it's clear. One plus is there's ample parking. I don't have to worry about people getting hit in the middle of West Main Street walking home with their families because a lot of them live on Winter Street, Cedar Street, Chestnut, and they just walk across and they have little kids in carriages. Obviously, one of the negatives is there's no bathrooms over here. But I'm sure I could get some money together and get some porta potties. Um, well, they're taking a casual stroll over to Riverfront Park, which is a very nice thing and a very nice option. Would they come over here, do you think? I, I think so, because at one point we were going to do like a drive-in style over at Tanger, and a lot of people were, were interested. Yeah. A lot of people in the village district walked to the park. And they mm -hmm. cross the street is what. Yeah, yeah, and that is dangerous. I I support it a hundred percent, but I I cannot justify. By what? Going over parks to give you that space over there. Sorry. You mean going over parks? Over here. Parks isn't in charge of that. I'm sorry, Joe. They asked for us, and we said no. They always put up a fight when I have it at Riverfront Park, anyway. I get well. That's a different issue, and we can address get costed that. over the dumbest thing. So, from them, that's an issue we can address. Well, I appreciate you listening. Next Maybe up, you guys me. can take some time to think about it, and you can let me know. All right, I can All reach right. via email <laughs> or phone. There you go. Yeah, get right on the port body so they go quick. Thank you. Do they? And, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And thank you for doing this because yeah. uh, we we really, uh, I really love movies in the park. I think it's we'll great for the community. We'll great for the community. Love it's the great community. for the community. Absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah. I'd love to see that happen. Yeah, we'll make it happen. Yep. All right. You guys okay. have a good night. Thanks All right. for coming. Thank you, Thanks, Officer Liz. Murray. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Time being 5.30, we'll have the... Uh, swearing in of interim Lieutenant Gilman. I know there's a crowd of people out there. And also watching. And for those nice people watching. Oh, wow, we got a big crowd. Wow. Yes. All right. From North Carolina. North Carolina. From Florida. So make, he needs to stand in front of the table so we can see. Yeah, we need to. Well, there's a control panel for that camera. Do you have the controls, Jeannie? Uh, well, you have the control for the camera? That is up there. We can turn the camera and do it in an open.
Hug in the flag. <laughs> Hello. Okay, good. Okay, to the inhabitants of the town of Tilton in the county of Belknap in the state of New Hampshire, whereas there is a vacancy in the position of an interim lieutenant in the town of Tilton, whereas we the subscribers have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, do hereby appoint you, Abraham Gilman, to the position of interim lieutenant for the town of Tilton, which shall be effective as of May 6, 2021. And whereas upon taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town Tilton Town Clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liability of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead, given under our hands this 13th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2021, the Board of Selectmen. If you raise your hand, I, your name, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me as an interim lieutenant for the town of Tilton, according to the best of my abilities, agreeable to the rules and regulations of the United States Constitution and the state of New Hampshire. I do. Uh, so help me God. Look at that smile. Oh, 
Congratulations, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was that was fun last night. Lord, the Lord Hampshire. So, what I, I haven't done. I guess I got to drive down. I don't have no idea what they're doing. I don't know, water, gas. I'm off the gas, I know that. Gas. Oh, it's, it, it gets. But I will real, buy you lunch. Real nasty around the lake. Yeah. I remember a couple of years ago they were doing up by the, was the old travel lodge or whatever it was. He wanted it quick and easy, just not, not a lot of words. So I uh, did it. Jeannie, can you fix the uh, camera? It is. Oh, look at that. Look, wow. Why is it broken? No. No, they turned it. Oh, yeah, I don't. You already fixed it. Wait, That's pretty good how you can multitask like that. All right. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. Becoming a technology expert. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you do in your time down here, huh? Come in here and learn how to use the camera. All right. Um, do we have to hold strict to the six o'clock on Mr. Davis? Okay. So, all right. So next is uh, Tyler Davis of 247 Caleb Hill Road, driveway variants. Come join us up front, Mr. Davis. Please make sure you speak into the microphone so the audio picks you up properly for minutes. Good evening, Mr. Chair, board members. How are you doing tonight? Excellent, how are you? Good, what brings you to us? So I, back in December, purchased 247 Caleb Hill Road and I'm seeking a variance and permit for a driveway um, to access my property due to the deeded driveway um, has me crossing wetlands and the access point to my property that I'm using and intend to use as my driveway cuts across my field and directly to where my house is gonna be laid. Um, I don't know if you have a map of, yes, of the, um, their layout and the current layout. So that entrance I'm looking to use is off the corner of Califf Hill and range. And I'm looking to use the range road access as it's the, in my view, most logical and safest point of access to my property. Um, it is a previously um, accepted permitted driveway. I do have the 
uh, permit from back from 10, uh, 10, 6 of 2015 um, from Todd and Michelle Corey. So I'm just looking to make this my driveway so I can build my house. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Pat. So we did a little research on this after this was presented um, as to be on the agenda for us. And we found that there was an existing highway permit given by Johnny um, Van Tassel, who was the highway director at the time. And during that time when uh, Todd uh, Corey owned it, after the driveway permit was given, they also cut into the road. So they cut into the stone as you, um, over here, they cut into the proposed driveway. And I believe, so we took pictures of it. So they already have the existing driveway there. Yes, that's and pretty I think interesting. It's, Tyler, it, is it ledge pack over there now, or is it? That, the first, the first time? that picture you see there is for the first 15 feet into my property is. And then I'm looking to just do a gravel driveway that parallels the stone wall and cuts back down to the uh, opposing wood line. So some of what he's asking for already exists, which in the beginning we didn't know existed. So it does exist. Um, however, the range road is a class six road. We would, um, if the board chose to grandfather that because it's an existing driveway cut, um, I feel very strongly that we would still have to implement what the language that we um, did for John Bernard on the class six road, which we would not be um, uh, plowing or um, for fire or any services on, on that. We have, do you have a copy of that, Jeannie? Did you bring a copy of it? The John Bernard language? Let me just and explain I'm, to the board. I'm more than willing to accept responsibility for the, the clearing of snow and all that for that area to allow access. And back to the point of um, emergency vehicles, that right there is a prime spot for, um, say, Tilton's ladder truck or whatever to get down. The driveway that was in the deed would, yes, cross wetlands and cause a bunch of other issues. But as far as safety is for anybody else coming in, it would just, it would create more problems for anybody trying to get to my house in a rush if need be. Why do you need it in? Because that stone wall is the property line. Why do you need the barrier? It, I wouldn't think he does, knowing that it's already a permitted drive. Right. Because we didn't know it at the time. This that it is was permitted until today, right until well, yesterday. I, I had no idea this was permitted up until I just got this paperwork myself today. Okay. Right. Today before I showed up. Right. Correct. Yes, yeah. I was yeah. at the planning board, and they. Were they not aware of it. <laughs> they were not aware of it. So wouldn't the variance be on, uh, entered by zoning? I mean, wouldn't the variance be issued by zoning? Well, uh, in looking at the um, the letter that went to the selectman, um, it says it requires uh, uh, all driveways shall conform to side and rear setbacks contained in the current zoning regulation. So it looks like they have to go back to zoning or he needs to go back to zoning. Um, they wouldn't have to go back to zoning because this is before the zoning regulations. So when did the zoning regulations come into effect? Well, it says these setbacks in the driveways is number three to construct a driveway permitted location in accordance with state statutes, town ordinances, rules, and regulations, conditions for construction attached. 
in, in the, there's a lot of things that I. Did, did you all get you? I think I sent you all a copy of the letter from Leanne and from Jane Alden, right? You did, yes. Okay, yeah. so it it really spells it out in both those letters of what appears to be required. Well, I can. And the town is the one who issues driving. But but I don't think on a class six. And this letter came way before they knew that there was an existing driving driveway permit. Class six was mentioned in there somewhere. I remember in reading it correct. when I read through it. Yes. So um, the yeah. DOT, correct. So, and so if this is already if it's already set up, the the DOT's concern in terms of drainage and water and stuff, it's it's already been addressed. Okay. Yes. Okay. And there's there's absolutely no modifications right. needed for that entrance. That okay. So we have an ex um, so the DOT is only concerned about the drainage they remain neutral, the above mentioned proposal. So they're only concerned with the drainage coming off of which there is none right, because correct. it's above. Because it's already been, right. and it's yeah. already and it's been, already been in it, existence it since 2015. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It flows onto the property. Yes, right, off. exactly. John? Um, you know, it's an interesting um, predicament here. The, the permit that was issued said that it, it would conform to that it doesn't conform to it. However, ZBA, and if we were to give it our blessing, saying this is the best thing for this mm -hmm. piece of property, I think that might be appropriate. And one of the reasons why it's good is first, as you stated, your neighbors are all right on board with this. Yes, and I they could state that. Yes. Um, and it actually is better than had it been located in the wetlands and flowing right. through there. It's obviously been existing and there's been no problems until now. Exactly. Um, the other part that would be uh, beneficial to ZBA would be that you were previously issued a permit for this and you're just rectifying to make sure that it, it becomes officially Official, stamped. yes. I'm really confident that ZBA would, and I would give it my blessing for it personally. I don't know about the rest of the selectmen or yeah. that. But, so, but to follow the, the process so that you, you don't get anybody trying to say that something was not done for the process, mm -hmm. um, I feel is the best way to do it. Um, Can I take a look at the actual driveway permit that you have? Yes. Thank you. It's already a driveway. Yeah. Yes. So, Yes, it's, it's all right. And I was, I didn't find out any of this information. I was told when I initially, I found out from the neighbors that the, I don't know if there's pictures of the shared driveway I'm supposed to use on there, but um, that lead, the shared driveway, my fear would be wintertime because it's all downhill and it leads right into the neighbor's house. If that's icy and I can't stop, I'm going right into her living room, and I'm not. <laughs> that's an expense I don't want to occur. That's an, I want to be a friendly neighbor. Is the house already there, or is it to be built? It's to be built. I have the house will be showing up July eighth. Okay. Um, I didn't look for a house. I just drove by and looked yeah. for a driveway. Nope. There's there's no house there. Where the where the uh, log pile is to the right of that, the house will be will be sitting. I wanted to maintain the field yeah. deal and I think if we can <laughs> been in existence even long before that driveway permit was there. That was a, a cut to get to the field so they could maintain it or cut wood or yes. hay it and that just like any other um, the Daniels, property. the Daniels back in the day. This was that was all farm field, and mm -hmm. that was all theirs. 
So it was used for hay and whatnot. Now I just have the blessing to have purchased the property. Now I just need to make my dream a reality. I mean, the only thing you, you mentioned specifically a, a ladder truck. I don't see a ladder truck swinging into that driveway. Well, coming down the hill, you could get it. Well, but most likely, and I'm not, Yeah, I don't know where they would, I would most imagine they would be coming from the right. They most likely would and, be. Um, they, that's a pretty gosh darn I tough. have faith they get I, I have yeah. faith in them too. I'm just saying, you know, back in. Because I can, the, the garbage truck gets down in there just fine. I mean, granted, the ladder is much longer. Well, no, I'm not talking about the road. I'm talking about the the, the angle the, itself, the approach angle. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, what I mean, uh, you know, stop by and see the see them and ask or uh, for Deputy Joubert, and he would let you know. But I'm just in case they make you go. Yeah, you know, at least if you have a letter from the TNFD, um, just another right. T and I that you got crossed and dotted. So. Any other discussion from anyone? Was there were there people on the call, Tim? Yeah. Oh, look at that. I think that we need to have some type of an agreement going forward that the town neither assumes responsibility for maintenance, including snow power plowing no liability for any damages resulting from the use of the road. Um, the owner shall be responsible for maintaining access to the subject property and to hereby forever release and discharge the town, its offices, agents, employees from obligating, maintaining the road and so on. And these are some of the things that we put in the road on the opposite end of a pest house road where it was a class six. Um, in that some of these don't apply, like number five, having maintained the road width, but you're only having a driveway off of it, so yes. it doesn't. And out of the five uh, five houses on Range Road, only one other person, one person has uh, signed off. Right. A lot of liability and. Whatnot. And so this would be that the owner show assume responsibility for transporting any children to the nearest regular school bus drop, which would be real close to you anyway. Yes. But so what would be applied here would probably be uh, one, two, three, and uh, four and six. The other one talks about the road and you're not building on the road, you're building a driveway off of the road. So that would be um, subject to an agreement and release by the town of Tilton. I'm watching oh. Tim, so but, yeah, no, no. In regards to a class six road. Yeah, I mean, and then he's. And then I would go ahead and motion that we accept the the um, driveway permit as a as a, a legal already permitted driveway. I let him go forth with this build. Mr. Jessen. Um Point of clarification, if he already has a driveway permit, hmm? then what are we permitting exactly? He's got the driveway permit. Don't have to approve a permit because he has one, right? Right. I believe it's just because it was off at Class Six Road and right. But they didn't right. have the driveway permit. Have a permit. That's about it. As long as you understand that, you know the things on that paper. Uh, going forth, you already have the permit. Right. John. The only difference is that signed permit by them says that it will follow all the zoning ordinances and all the the laws on it and it doesn't fit into that so if he goes to zba and we write a letter saying we're on board with this and we're um for it um 
then he's covered. Everything's done, and it's and it's a properly issued permit because that permit allows him to have a driveway, but says he has to meet all the zoning stuff on there. But he has to doesn't he meet right precisely. Uh, make can read number three. It would it would have to be the zoning at the time of the permitted driveway permit at 2015, whatever zoning was in in. Change the law. Can't think of anything driveway. that would have changed. Yeah, there's there's been setbacks says, and stuff that have been changed. Might be a setback issue. Okay. Um, construct the driveway entrance at the permit location in accordance with state statutes, town ordinances, rules, regulations, and conditions for construction attached. Uh, location shall be selected most adequately protect the safety and traveling public. Um, Have a set in, in the, and the only reason, I mean, there's a few things sir, that it wouldn't fit into, and I don't know if it did then or what, but even if ZBA said no to them, the selectman could override that. And, and they, yeah, and yeah, we have then, before. Yeah. Yes, we have. Yeah. And I think that it would go through properly. I think it would there's be a couple of things on here, the last two especially. That was written though before they knew there was a driveway permit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Just so you know. So this says four. Is that what you were talking about? Oh. All driveways shall can. All driveways shall conform to the side and rear setbacks contained in the current zoning regulations. Which it didn't. But the permit was 2015. 2015. Which would have been the current at the time. Yeah. So, right. Yeah, but it's still 22. It also says, as the landowner, I hereby agree to the following conditions, and those are listed. A 15 inch culvert and drainage that 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 and clearing the bamboo for sight distance. And that's what Johnny Van Tassel put down on the on the, the bottom driveway box. permit well, for there's conditions. 12, there's twelve other conditions mm -hmm. that it has to fit. Right. So then, if you look at number nine, no driveway will be permitted to be constructed within fifty feet of an intersecting street. Intersecting street and and one hundred feet is desirable. I'm pretty darn sure that's that's like twenty feet. I mean, so I don't know if he has to go to. I mean, I would. I don't think it's a. I I don't think it's a good idea to um, skirt around planning and zoning. I don't think that's a, a good thing to be doing. Uh, I, I feel that this would go through no problem with them. That he definitely has all the criteria, all five criteria there. These are very reasonable people, and we put them to it. And, I'll pass that back. He's got that copy already. Yeah, this is the email we got. Yeah. Yeah. This way, John. Oh, I can. Oh, I can hand it to her. Yeah. yeah. I'll just. There you go. That's a short route. Yeah. That's a short route. Give up my papers to them. Wow. <laughs> There's a black hole down that end. <laughs> <laughs> this was 2017. That was 2015. Entered. Nine. That's when it was 11. entered. Look at Johnny's date on the bottom when he signed it. 10 6, 2015. So, I'd like to ratify it. And, you know, we have a town official that gave him permission to give him the driveway, whether right, wrong, conditions. or indifferent, with certain conditions. And they were allowed, they constructed a driveway based on that permit. That's they, the bottom line. Does it meet those conditions? Or did it ever? That was up to the town official. And he signed that it would end right. as long with the person who applied for it also signed that it would meet those conditions. Mm -hmm. And 
No, it's it, 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 back issue. Intersecting road thing, I don't know about exactly how far it is, but it's real close that if the storm I, I agree with John. Uh, I've been on the zoning board. Okay. Well, I they're all pretty reasonable people. Not saying that they're not. I wouldn't uh, belabor Mr. Davis here. Make a decision. All right. So, do we have to make a go ahead. zoning board? Zoning board. Is that a motion or is that just a consensus? Uh, that's just my opinion. I don't know if we need a motion. I I'd like to make a motion that we um, give our blessings in the letter along with them to the zoning board uh, in support of the location of his driveway and as it presently is. I don't think uh, my concern there is that aren't ultimately we the appeal. Mm -hmm. So if we're given a letter, I don't think that's proper for this board to give a letter. Correct. As individuals, we. Mm -mm. That is the board of select. That is a board. And how are we going to? How are we going to ensure that our class six uh, indemn indemnification gets rectified in the zoning portion? And if we send him back to zoning, then you're what you're going to do is require him to then come back to us to sign indemnification on a class six road, which okay. he's willing to do, but yes. we're, we're requiring him to jump there and jump back Why again. Why can't he just sign the indemnification? Well, now? Jeannie has but, to write it up and everything. So, no, because we can't a, just- a Wednesday and we could sign it on a Thursday. No, it's on a Tuesday, but that he wouldn't be before zoning before June. It's too late to be- Oh, he has an appointment I'm, next I'm, week. I already, I'm oh, already, already, I'm oh, already okay. on the agenda yeah. for uh, next Tuesday. Oh, okay. So I- on Thursday, we could- just sign it. I, I will sign it personally. Yeah. So so I think we just send him back to, to zoning. He has zoning on Tuesday. Yes. And we'll go from there. Do we have any do we get public do we have to get public comment? We have people online. Yeah. Can if you want. So is there anyone out there on the interwebs? Yes, Three Eric. People? Eric, Jane Alden, can you hear me? I can hear you, Jane. Oh, All right, I just want to shed some light on this case that you just got through discussing. I happen to have been involved in the initial request. I met with the, at that time, the owner, and I met with another resident of the town who brought the owner to me. We went out to the location and called the director the highway director, because at that time, it was up to the highway director to make the decision. And it met all the qualifications that were at that time on the, in the zoning. It met every single one of them. And that's why the highway director signed off on that, which is what we were dealing with at that time in, in 2015. So I personally was there when the decision was made. <laughs> Jane Alden, this is Joe Jessman. Hi, Joe. Uh, hi there, Jane. Uh, I was, uh, I'm wondering about the setback requirements. Um, there were no setback requirements in place at that time? At that time, we... at that time, there was not, as far as we can determine. I spoke with Leanne today and we couldn't find the setback being required at that time because of the kind of road it was. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's why, and, and Johnny was aware of the intersection. He was aware of the, of the requirements by the, of the intersection and he granted it and said there would not be a problem. He was the highway director at the time. Oh, I remember, John. I guess it's not the um, setback from the intersection we're talking about. So we can look and see when that was amended, because that would have been amended. So I, um, I, 
Yes. Uh, are you talking about the setbacks to the intersection, Jane, or the setbacks of the property line? I'm talking about both. And there were no, there was nothing in our zoning at that time. There, I believe there was in terms of the intersection because we discussed the intersection, and it was with it was far enough away that that was not a concern. Okay. Oh, somebody's at the door. Yeah, that wants to come in here. It's. Okay, we can get that. You got it? Okay. It's easy to look it up and uh, see when these things were changed. I, I just want to do it right. And, and when it came know, when it came before the planning board this last time, shame on me. I wasn't aware of it because I knew the property well. I just did not know the street address. I did not know that that was two forty seven Caleb Hill Road. I do know that now. But um, since then, I've realized that that is a piece of property. And I talked today with the town resident who went with me and with Corey and with Mr. Van Tassel at that point in time. Are they at town hall or are they at the police station? Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. You're welcome. They're told. Permission to step away, just call them real quick. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was the chairman of the planning board. I just, you know, and if uh, we look into this and that was the case, can do it, but I, I would not want that to be an error and him miss his meeting at ZBA and then out oh, another month because he would have to we come have back. time to research this between now and his ZBA meeting. Because if if there's no answer, definitive answer, when he hits ZBA, there's no result. And he's right back where he is right this very instant. Uh, the head of the planning board went and researched the zoning and said there was nothing in the zoning that precluded a driveway uh, where it is currently located. Um, and she worked with Leanne on finding the answer. Who else would we go to? Um, you know, and there's, I'll do respect, Jane, but that was, I recall that there wasn't. And mm -hmm. I just want to get things done right on paper and by documents and not people's memories on things on this. It's beneficial to him to have it done right, make sure the paper trail is in existence, because if we don't do that, we're continuing the same process of not using procedures and paperwork and making sure things line up. Just that that's what gets us into trouble. And then you know, I do it for everybody. And so if the planning board knew that there was a driveway permit existing, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now, John. We would not be having this conversation here with the Board of Selectmen. And, and then are. what would Mr. Davis be doing? Well, if, if on the, at their meeting, before they wrote this letter to the Board of Selectmen, knew about the driveway permit on in 2015, then what would Mr. Davis's next step be? Well, his next step would be that if a neighbor moved in across the street and challenged it and said this wasn't done right and you don't have it and you can't use that driveway. It's the same thing as with parking issues of people assuming that they have spaces. If they challenged that he never got the proper approval for that driveway because they were mad at him or a neighbor bought it up next door. <laughs> in all due respect, happened, you're doing happened. exactly what you're challenging Jane Alden, the chairman of the I'm planning board. Saying, you're not, saying if 
a neighbor moved in. That neighbor that's been beside Mr. Davis has been there for years and years and years and knows that driveway's in there now. And they sell it. And the, I'm just saying that these things happen. These things happen. If, yeah, no, they do. If he was, if he was, to make this right. If he was going before the ZBA, the neighbor, the current neighbors would be uh, notified. Mm -hmm. And they have and, been. Right. And they would have their opportunity to come present their case. Mm -hmm. You can't worry about if a neighbor moves in next year and doesn't like you and decides you can't. It's what was done now. The, the permit was issued. 2015, 2015. Seven years, six it's years unfortunate ago. we didn't know that on April 30th, as I read, right. when he was before the planning board. It's unfortunate that we didn't have that information because you wouldn't be here right now. Right. right. In exactly. my opinion. It's my point. Having served and on both. I, there's a lot I wish I knew before <laughs> I had purchased this property. <laughs> Believe me. Well, that's... We're making a determination yes. as somebody recalls what specifically happened that day. We have documents. We have um, all of our zoning laws. They can look up, make sure it's right ratify the thing and he's clear but if it turns out that maybe it wasn't changed then and that it then he's screwed he could somebody could challenge it it was in existence mr jessman um, i concur these are legal proceedings and the judge doesn't understand i recall and the judge doesn't understand i think if it's not in strict accordance to the laws as written, then uh, we got a problem. And we've had problems in the past. You concurred 20 minutes ago when we tried to send Mr. Davis to the zoning board and then somebody took a twist and we've been talking this about this. And I want to send, I want to send, John wants to send it to zoning. I Nobody's stopping anybody. Well, then I make a motion we send this gentleman to zoning. Make a motion. Why can't I make a motion? Because he already tried to make a motion and Eric nobody, stopped him. Nobody seconded it. With the it. appeal. I didn't make a motion. No, we just need the consensus just to send him to the zoning. We can't. We cannot make a motion because we are the appeal. Um, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, the, yeah. we're the appeal. Okay. Um, the zoning. So. Zoning. I'm going in circles. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's just send, send them the zoning. That's my. And just ask them to come, ask them to come back, uh, or we can make a motion that it, it, whatever zoning does, it's contingent upon. We can't even do Again, that. Well, the we can't even do that. That we Gina, need can, the indemnif indemnification. Can the road. can the zoning the zoning board be aware of what's required? Or is that only strictly between the board of selectmen and Mr. Davis? The 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 indemnification. That's a that's between us. Okay. So can we put Mr. Davis on our he's calendar to bring it up himself that he's well he wants to do that and and sign that. We'll oh, just ask him to come back and no. sign it for us. We'll but have it, it ready. Be beneficial at zoning to say I have conditions for this that would meet that um is no for it and uh, this all. Well, okay. Jeannie, but, Jeannie, in all fairness, though, needs some time to uh, make this more specific to his situation rather than a uh, generic um, version. Right. By the 18th. Right. So, well, they, so I, if I were to sign that piece of paper, would I just be able to drop it off to, say, the town hall office rather than wait till the next select from board meeting just to? Hand you a piece of paper. Okay. Drop it off and we'll bring it up. Well, no, no, no. you wouldn't no, be we'll signing the paper no. that we need to see it. First. Yeah, yeah, you we need, need to see it before you can sign it. Right. Yeah, right. We're not. Right. You I want assume. To see it. Right. Yeah. 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 Her eyes just got big. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> yeah, if you signed it. And we have to go to zoning. After that, we can have them come back before the board and we can do the indemnification. Because if the zoning board denies them, the moot point. Well, we, can, and we could override, we have things. 
right in the off chance that zoning does deny it that makes that lot much much harder to build on well then you come back here because we're the final for the appeal, appeal. yeah and you know present i forget what the five things are but put all those together very clearly and have them all ready um so that you can show that you meet all that criteria that's that's what would be the go ahead for it can't not just you want it here but all the hardships and then it find those out yep is there anything else all right so we'll send you to zoning i think that's the consensus and you're playing yeah. musical boards now. Yeah. Hey. Music stops. Yeah. <laughs> Find a seat. So I apologize for the misstep in not finding oh. that. Um, found in the eleventh hour. I mean, it's right. We yeah, found it in the eleventh hour. I get handed this this morning. <laughs> right. So, uh -huh. so I mean, I had to go to the other realtor to right. and pick his brain. Just to get more information that I should have, that I should have had when he should have been forthcoming when I bought the property, but instead I spend two two and a half months playing ring around the rosy trying to mm -hmm. get information. Right. So well, we can take but, care of this real quick. I think at this. Hopefully, point. right. Yeah. Hopefully, it will be yeah. real quick. Bring that and, to the zoning too. Yes. So, so. Glad that you have that appointment on Tuesday. So I do now. <laughs> I do now. Get back to us on next week or the week after and get it settled. Yes. Yep. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Davis. You, Mr. Davis. Thank you. All right. Keep in touch with us. Let us know how it works out. I will. I appreciate it. I don't. I know one member in the public might have questions. All right. Uh, for clarification. Sure. Is there anyone on the public that would like to talk about Mr. Davis? About his driveway. About his driveway, not Mr. Davis <laughs> himself, but Mr. <laughs> Davis the, dri the driveway at 247 Caleb Hill Road. There's three people, oh, Mr. Barrett, and I don't know who Tracy is. All right. Well, that's not then. All right. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Spoke, so. Well, my parents are on there too. Oh, okay. Got <laughs> that's it. Fine. Ah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sam. Hi, Christine. Hi, Christine. Hi. Thanks. Isn't it gorgeous? Nice. Did you have anything you want to say or? Yeah, well, you'll have to come back. We'll give you a tour. Now, where did they? Right outside that door. I don't think they. Yes. Yeah, there's going to be bricks. Uh, oh, outside. there's tiles all right outside the door on the left, but the bricks are going to be by the flagpole. Oh, not yet. Oh. There's still receipt. The, the outside's the, not finished. There's still landscaping. You can get a special tour if you are a I bad know, girl. <laughs> <laughs> drive, drive really fast. And Thanks. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thanks for coming in. Next, uh, selectman reports. First up, Pat Constantino. Well, um, first off, we met with the um, police department on Monday and let them know of the changes. That went very well. Um, Jeannie and I met. The other is a, I, I had questions on uh, calls on the Cedar Street, um, but the questions were answered earlier, so I don't have that. There is an announcement that came um, from the Veterans Affairs, U.S. Veterans Affairs, the Manchester Veterans uh, Food Insecurity Task Force um, is having a drive-through pantry for veterans. There will be two events offered, one in Tilton, Wednesday, May 26, from 10 to 12, located at the VACBOC, which I believe is at the Main Street Tilton, which is over by the Practice supply on the right hand side at the mm -hmm. clinic. Right beside the Chinese restaurant. Yes. And then uh, there's one in Manchester on 
Wednesday, June 30th from 10 to 12, located at the VAMC, VAMC 718 Smith Road, Manchester. Our goal is to ensure adequate food for veterans who are running short on resources due to the financial hardships in the COVID virus. Food boxes will include a variety of nutritious shelf stable foods to help stretch that food budget. Please bring a VA ID or valid proof of veteran status to participate. Together we are stronger. If you're able, we are accepting donations to support this cause as well. So if anybody would like to donate um, to this drive through pantry for veterans on Wednesday, May 26th at the Tilton CBOC, um, how can you help? Food don donations are needed for this event, non-perishable and pre-packaged healthy foods. Ideas listed below. Please drop your donations off at Nutrition and Food Service Kitchen across from the enrollment and eligibility or in voluntary services. So I would imagine that it's over there on the um, Main Street Clinic. And so there's a lot of canned and nut butters and canned vegetables and canned fruits and dried fruits and uh, grains, beverages, powdered milk, soups, um, and donations are needed as soon as possible. And um, uh, we have two new um, bus drivers. They were trained on Saturday and we're, they're out on the road picking up um, residents um, starting this week. We're very excited about that working, still working on the MOU between the two towns so that we can enter um, and venture out into Sanvitan in Northfield. I'm having a hard time with the MOU because I've never written an MOU before, believe it or not, but it's coming along. It's a draft. <laughs> it. All right, thank you, Pat. Thanks. Scott Ruggles. Uh, so two items this week. Uh, in the, the mural that we approved last week, the new one, the mental health mural, I um, I was able to talk to Terry Smith, who's the, the faculty who's in charge of that, and um, they're going to work on making sure that there is a key um, or a QR code that people could actually zap with their phone and then be able to understand what the symbols are. Um, and they're also going to add a little bit of color in the background um, with some ribbons that also represent um, the different ribbons that um, represent the different mental health and anxiety things as well. So um, it, it was, I was able to see the updated design at breakfast the other day and it's, um, it's, it's really good and, and they're very enthusiastic about it. Uh, second piece that I would um, like to bring to the table is um, we've had a lot of discussions, side discussions, et cetera, about the piece of property right next to us. And I'm, I'm wondering if it's time for um, this body and um, the Parks Commission to have maybe a joint meeting to just start discussing it and having a, 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 a look at exactly the direction that we want to go with it or suggest or what they're thinking as well. John? I think I... Uh... Gina was going to put something to get a survey from people in the letter that goes out with the tax bills on you know what people would like to see all the taxpayers so that that will help there and then good idea though parks and have asked them to give some input too I like. It. Did you have something, Jeannie, or no? Uh, John just mentioned it, and so maybe it would make sense to wait to we'll put a deadline on the response to the survey, and once you get all those results back, then that might make sense to have a meeting with the Parks Commission. Sure. Great. All right. Anything else? Oh, no, I'm all set. Thank all you. Right. Thank you, Scott. Joe Jessman. Uh, the only uh, real thing I've got, well, I would like to say, and I should have said it when the director of public works was here. Um, I went I went down and I've been going down there once every couple of weeks to do things with, you know, Kevin or the amnesty. And, and uh, today I drove around out back up on the hill and whatever and saw the changes that have been made. And they're doing a bang them up job over there. Uh, really, uh, they've got all of the the material as part of that uh, gas line or whatever that's going up Route Three. 
They got all this stuff piled up over there for the driveway. Uh, no charge to us. Um, uh, they've got they've got the road done. I don't know if you've been up there, but there's a road that goes up above the dumpsters, and you just go and toss your stuff in. Uh, or there's one where you back up for the C and D, and you back right up to the edge and just great. It's great. They've made some very good changes, and and I'm, I commend the guys at the Public Works Department for all their hard work and efforts. Uh, my other thing is that uh, you ready, John? This is the weekend to start perambulating. Uh, I'm going. I have the wheel for measurements and and uh, a paint with a very fine nozzle. It's a waterproof, like outside paint stuff. Uh, for marking the the posts, got my my compass uh, and the bug spray, uh, and I was thinking that uh, well I would call you after I get home tomorrow evening and and whatnot maybe I'll come over and and we'll talk about it and have a game plan for attacking it first thing Saturday morning. Okay, and and that's me. All right, um, that's me next. Um, to, uh, I'll report about parks first. Um, the parks department is hoping to have Christmas in June, uh, trying to get confirmation from the vendor on a date, uh, for fireworks. If you recall the fireworks display in December was canceled due to COVID or postponed, I should say, uh, the vendor had given the parks commission until July 4th, roughly to get that done. We're hoping to do Christmas in June, the same weekend as whole, old home day would be. And we're waiting for confirmation on that. And we also had to get permission from the town of Northfield to set up fireworks in um, Surrett Park. So we're, we're working on that. Unfortunately, um, town hall is currently closed over in Northfield and they have, uh, there were no meetings this week. So uh, they don't know if there will be any next week, um, but the, um, the, so I guess it's just the selectman's office now is currently closed or the town clerk tax collector's office is open. I'm not sure what else is open, but, uh, and I also wish that everyone over there is well and uh, recovers health, uh, healthy. Um, the other issue um, was, and I don't know if anyone's contacted you yet, Jeannie, um, is the, now that there are more events occurring at La Pete, uh, at, at Riverfront Park, and yeah, that the the number of spaces that are designated for the park are being used by attendees of the events there. Uh, therefore, people would not be able to use the and, and enjoy the park. Um, so there there was a request to have um, um, the police step up enforcement of that if they see events going on there because it's been an issue in the past. Yeah, I think this was um, brought up a week or two ago. Okay, it was yeah. brought up on Monday night, so. Um, yeah, then it came in front of this because I had already reached out to the police about it. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, I, I'm going through my note. I went through my notes and just, that's what I pulled out. Um, and then I'm gonna put on my fire commissioner hat now. Um, I would strongly suggest that perhaps we have invite um, the chief of Lakes Region Mutual Fire Aid to come in and have a discussion um, with this board as uh, he gave a very nice presentation to the fire commissioners the other night. Um, as you may or may not be aware, the um, town of Northfield is investigating withdrawing from Lakes Region Mutual Fire Aid again. Um, they've done a lot of cost cutting uh, in the town of Northfield as of late. Um, but he gave a, uh, he gave really the different scenarios of what could happen. Um, one of them is not good um, because if, if for us to, for, or for the Tilton Northfield Fire District to become a member, the town of Tilton would have to withdraw as well. Currently there's two seats on the board of directors and um, we, uh, our seat is used by Chief Sitar. 
TC Tar is also the direct uh, the chairman of, of that. Uh, Northfield has not participated for a number of years. Actually, neither one of them could remember ever having anyone from Northfield participate or use that seat. Um, but there's a, right now our costs between Tilton and Northfield are very similar. But if they withdrew, there would be a, a increase in our cost that gets paid to the fire district, but it's still an increase in our cost of several thousand dollars. Um, but it also, you know, there's all sorts of scenarios, but then part of the, it's currently made up of 35 towns and some of those things are divided by 35. Now they're going to be divided by 34 if that, if this happens, but there's a long step. You're, you're about a year away from them being able to, cause they have to give 180 day notice and that would be July 1st and it's not going to happen. I don't think, I don't think, um, but they're investigating withdrawing. Um, but it was a very informative discussion uh, when you get into worst case scenario that that um, the fire district isn't you know if Tilton doesn't withdraw then then you get into dispatching issues where if Northfield went to say capital area uh, Concord so all the calls in Concord would be, or Northfield would be dispatched by Concord Lakes region would dispatch for Tilton and if they're on a call in Northfield the Lakes region doesn't know that that's happening. So um, they're gonna dispatch the call to, to Tilton and there may be no one to respond. So it was a, it was a very educational um, thing, but I don't know uh, if the board would like to hear a presentation. It took about 20 to 25 minutes for him to go through and explain it all. Um, it. Yeah, so I can put that together. Yes, John. How is that not um, voted on at the annual budget and that number, isn't that the proper way to have enough people at the fire district at the legislative body um, to not belong? If, if they don't, their fire district. if they don't fund it, well, it's cool, but we have to. Right, but it's it's they can they are a member of Lakes Region Mutual Fire Aid. They can apply to withdraw from there. So um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Check out. Well, it's not. It's. Well, it, there, there's a lot of more to it that that he, you know, I'm just giving like the 30,000 foot view of of what he explained, but I mean. But that was already in the budget for the district and yeah. not in the North. No. Yeah, it's happened, it's happened several times before, but I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, guess who is the biggest contributor to Lake Street Mutual Fire Aid financially? Yeah. Nope. Moultonboro. Guess who every move impacts the most? Ellsworth. What are you talking about Ellsworth? There's only like 10 houses. In exactly. <laughs> and so they got to pay. So think about that. If, if you increase the cost, it goes up significantly for them. Um, but he explained how they they all work together, and it, it was really it was really an interesting conversation um, that he had with us. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, okay, I will I will invite him, and I think that's all I had today. So, thank you. And oh, John Scanlon, I was looking at you. Sorry, I thought you got my tel telepathy. Come to life. Um, just you know, I'm I'm pretty happy to see they're uh, progressing quite a lot down in Franklin with the um, water and that. Really, they've been, been they've been breaking ground on you yeah. know, like the car wash and that. Nice. Um, this is going to be a big thing if it's for Franklin to bring people into our community. Um, I see a lot of improvements around town. The painting of the Pump house, we can look at onions. It's beautiful, the, the color. It's the, you know, I, not having it white, it just, it really stands out, looks great. 
and uh, what they're doing for the um, downtown look better and our community. I think Jeannie might even be talking about that. Anything about downtown and the uh, um, threat and all that? Are you going to bring that up in your report? Maybe you can touch on it a little bit. Sure. I've been so busy. <laughs> see, see. So <laughs> with that, I hand. I, I That's all I have to say. <laughs> the, yeah, I'm gonna hand it over to. Yeah, uh, I would say that the building directly across from town hall. Oh, that looks beautiful. Absolutely. Directly. Uh, much nicer. That, much nicer. That, in the it, at night too, if you haven't seen yeah. it at night, with the down lighting. Oh, it's fantastic. fantastic. It's looking fantastic. Excellent. Jeannie has a nice new view out her office window, but oh wait, she's not there ever. So ever. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't really go into public and, and explain the changes, though you just said unseal the minutes and so nobody knows what we're talking about when we say Jeannie's very busy. Um so just before we go to my report, um <laughs> When you schedule that meeting with Lakes Region Mutual Fire Aid, will you? Can we talk about when we put them on? Because we got a lot going on in the next few weeks, so I just want to make sure we don't have a long, long night. Right. Please. Yeah, and just to give you a warning, the fire commissioner—I don't want to say warning, but the fire commissioners uh, have been asked to meet with the Northfield selectmen on June first. Okay, so I, so that's when we're going to find out more about the whole. Oh. Okay. All right. Can we go to that? Uh, I assume so. Their town hall is open. Open to the public. Well, the town hall is not currently open, but yeah, I'll keep you updated. Um, all right. Anything else, John? All right. Town administrator's report. All right. Um, you have my weekly update, and it includes the police department, some of the police department activities now. Uh, the tax warrant is ready for your signature. If you haven't signed it, if you could, um, that would be great. Wanted to bring up the mass requirement uh, that has been lifted at the state offices and find out if you want to reconsider mask wearing at town hall or continue and other town buildings or or continue with the requirement. Nobody's said anything to me. I just know that they've stopped wearing masks at the state offices and just bringing it up for your consideration. I don't have a preference one way or the other, but bringing it up to the board. Um, How do you feel about that? What, what, yeah, what do you think? Well, you know, um, if you read in the union leader today, you know that uh, one of the nursing homes, 12 of their residents got COVID even though they had received the shot. So, yeah. Yeah, so when I read that, I was a little concerned. Um, I mean, it's uh, no one, as I said, nobody at town, uh, no one's complained about wearing a mask. I just want, because I know it's changing everywhere else, I just wanted to bring it up to your attention. Joe? Um, I'm fully vaccinated. I'm assuming several of us in the room are, if not all of us. Uh, that doesn't make us bulletproof. Um, even the best of odds says that five people out of a hundred who get vaccinated could get COVID. Uh, and this whole uh, nursing home thing, perfect example uh, of that. This is not done. This is not even, in my opinion, uh, it's not rear view mirror. It's still a happening thing. I know people pretty close to me who've gotten sick. Um, people in this community have gotten sick and even just really recently have gotten sick. Um, 
and I would be in favor of at least on in town buildings to maintain the mask mandate. John? I'm trying to remember how we worded it. If people are um, in their own personal spaces and nobody's within, you know, six feet of them, are we requiring them to wear it now? Well, I, no, I, I mean, I no, I, I think that when you're seated, like for instance here, when you're seated, if you're traveling, if you're moving back and forth, you should have a mask on and, and at least a town hall. I know that if I'm sitting in my office, I, I don't have the mask on my face. Um, if somebody comes in, they have a mask on and if they sit down six feet away from me, I tell them if they're comfortable removing it, they can because we're six feet away. Um, that. Work it off in if anybody's going to be within uh, six feet that they should ask. I can go with that. And definitely don't be offended to ask that. Well, people and going into town hall should be wearing a mask. Yes. I, I agree. I think people, people going in, into yeah. town hall keep the mask mandate. But but do remember that the people um, working there. The town right? yeah, right. the town clerk tax collector continues to have the shield. The public, right? Yeah. Uh, I was in Market Basket in Plymouth today and I noticed no signs at the entrance requiring masks. Right. Um, I have them in Tilton or did last time I went. Yeah, I, I was in there at lunchtime and I did an informal survey of wherever I could see, wherever my eyes took me, and I only saw one person not wearing a mask. All employees were wearing masks, um, but I only saw one person. Everyone in the store wore a mask. We, um, we first student requires us to wear a mask still. The drivers. This afternoon by CDC. Yeah. But we. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Biden lifted the mask man so mandate, but it. it's still people, uh, corporations and businesses are still opting to keep that and be safe. School districts are still opting to keep the mask mandates, um, a lot of them, so. Unless you're vaccinated, that's and, the issue, that's the confusion. Well, if, even if you're vaccinated, there's still, there's there's a lot of people that are vaccinated in, as bus drivers that are vaccinated and it's required as a bus driver to wear a mask at all times. And if you're driving without students, you pull it down a little bit, but you still have it on your chin. So do we need a consensus? So just continue as we are for right now. Change no change. No change. Okay. Um, and there is a PAR in your to be signed folder for Lieutenant Gilman. If you could be sure to sign that. It's signed. Um, Everything's signed. Okay, great. School Resource Officer MOU, I looked at that today. Um, it's due to expire at the end of the school year and per the MOU, the agreement shall be renewed for successive three-year periods unless either party requests termination or modification in writing. And I have reached out to the superintendent just to find out, I'm trying to understand if there was a conversation with him um, or not. And um, because it sounded to me like their contact had been made. And, and so I don't know. And I put a call into him and I haven't heard back. But my question to you is, would you like me to continue that and find out what's going on? Or would you rather have me try to schedule a meeting with the superintendent and the board to discuss this? Absolutely, we knew it. Yeah, renew it. We knew oh, well, it. that's one. Two. I would renew it. If the school district is willing to renew it, then I would renew it. Agreed. Okay. Um, interviews have been scheduled for the three finalists for the police chief. The interview schedule uh, is Thursday, May 20th, Thursday, May 27th, and Thursday, June 3rd. I prepared a draft press release for you all to take a look at to uh, alert the residents of the opportunity. And I'd posted also on our website, wanted you to take a look and let me know if you have any concerns. 
um, or I think it's excellent. I like that that that, that the community is getting involved. I love that they they'll be able to come and meet the candidates and have a say in it. I just love it. I, I have one question. Sure. Are these community interviews going to take place here or virtually? Uh, both. Okay. So uh, what the uh, interview team envisioned was a, when we first talked about it, was a two-day process. As I looked at the various candidates, um, it changed a little bit. I have for you tonight um, the schedule for the first interview. I also have his resume and the answer, his resume or his essay questions. So I thought you might, I was going to give you one uh, candidate at a time. So I'll give you these tonight. You can take them, read them again, um, and be ready for next Thursday when you will be interviewing the candidate. But the schedule looks like this. On Tuesday, excuse me, Thursday, May 20th, from 2 to 2.30, the candidate would uh, tour our new police department from 2.30 to 3.30. They'd do a ride along with one of our officers to see the town. Um, 3.30 to 4.30, they would meet with department personnel for a meet and greet and a Q&A. 4.30 to 5.45, they'd tour downtown and have dinner with the lieutenant sergeants and the sergeants or whoever's available. Uh, the selectmen's meeting will start at 4.45. Uh, you'll start your select, selectmen's meeting and at six o'clock, there would be a meet and greet with the community members at the selectmen's meeting, sort of like a public meeting. After seven o'clock from seven to eight, there would be a non-public interview with um, the selectmen so that you could ask questions. I mean, at that, it, it's not about keeping confidentially confidentiality at that point, but it's about being comfortable asking questions in non-public. And um, this first candidate that you, uh, I'll hand you out his resume, um, has he is in in state, uh, and he has let his employer know. Uh, that he is interviewing in Tilton. So hmm. Okay. Okay. Duplicate. <laughs> Do, the uh, the one question I um, for you, Jeannie, do you think it would be it would benefit the other members of the board to be able to see the questions that we the committee had asked that you know the, oh, that the, that's a great idea yeah, so that so that the, so that they can sort of see the the framework and the scenarios that we we posed yes, in terms of the questions. Yes, I, I will so, send those questions to the board. Yeah, that that's the only only thing that I had. I can do that. Um, and won't go through the FYIs unless anyone has any questions. You heard me say earlier, I think that we're getting closer to the end of the finish of the police department and um, I'll start planning for a ribbon cutting. Question for the board, would you prefer to have it on a weekend or a Thursday, you know, during a selectman's meeting? If you have it on a weekend, um, more the public will be able to attend and do the tour of the facility. When we, when we, um, when we did Meredith, when we opened the new police station, that's what we did it on a weekend. So everybody could walk through and um, it was a nice, nice event. Um, I like the weekend. Do you? Yeah, glad you do. Um, on the back page, the number one, the number top one. Do you want us to act on that, or do you? Are you just going to go ahead and do that? Uh, the uh, well, I, I, 
I think if you have concerns, you should let me know. He's he's experienced. Uh, I don't have concerns. I want you to go ahead and do it. That's my opinion. Yeah. But I I didn't didn't know if you needed a motion or anything like that. Um, I, I that would make me more comfortable. I'm back up to a town administrator. I don't have oh. a town administrator's report. I don't think. No. Um. Yeah, and it's not. It's not. He, he did. Okay. On the top, the very top. On oh, the top. Yeah. Yeah. EMD. Mm -hmm. That's great. I like it. So, if you want to make a motion, uh, I think that's fine. But uh, it's not non-public. But you no, it's not. But you, it said. See if he would consider. Uh, he, um, Did you already check? Yes. Okay. So. So he's willing to consider it. Okay. No, so, he said yes. If okay. if this is he. I make a motion that we appoint. Uh, Kevin LaChapelle as a temporary emergency manager director, until we have a new chief in place. Testament second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Motion yeah. passes unanimously. Great. Thank you. I was curious if we know the status of the concerts on the island. Uh, I, go ahead. I've been trying to get in touch with Titus real hard this week mm. to firm this up. Told him, you know, if there's going to be any kind of problem, uh, let me know so that because we want to step in bare minimum to do a couple yep you know but we need some lead time and so forth but so far i haven't heard anything back i don't know what that means if he's working on this just because he hasn't got back to me doesn't mean that he isn't working on it and if he's working on it, you know what i mean because they've been working on it for 25 years uh, to assume that all of a sudden they're not going to without him saying that that could that could make for bad feelings or or you know duplication of services or I will continue to uh, pursue it. Okay. Oh, you graduated, and I think that's what was going on. And that yeah, they, don't know for sure. What, but what's, what's the drop dead date that we have before we are? We need to hear from him by. We don't have a drop dead date. Well, you to get the usually cut. the fifteenth. They're usually up here at the end of um, May, and we know, so we should probably just give Joe another week to reach out again. And yeah. I've reached out the same way, and uh, as a concern, not mm -hmm. as as the uh, concert, because I knew Joe was handling that, mm -hmm. but and he hasn't returned the phone call, so I'm in the same same situation. Uh, I know when um, I spoke to Titus last year, he said just days before Allison passed, she was working on getting everything set up for this yep. year. Yeah. Yeah. This year. So well, I talked to him once uh, several weeks ago, and and uh, it just sounded a little shaky for some reason. He didn't say no, but. Right. Things are happening in his world that uh, are, are making it hard. Uncontrollable, right. So I, I, hopefully he'll get back in touch with me and we can get a yes, no, maybe. Um, uh, we'll see. But I'll keep after it. All right. Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, Memorial Day, I did check with the American Legion. There, there will be no parade um, for Memorial Day. They're still going to visit the cemeteries like they do, but they're not doing the formal parade that they. Are they doing a, cer a, a ceremony over at the flagpole? That's my understanding. They're got, but they're just not going to have the parade. Um, and you all know that uh, the union, the police, this police department union purchased um, 547 American flags um, that we will be. Um, myself, Officer Murray, um, Leanne Moynihan, and Joe Hannah Ames were going to be 
putting the flags up in town. Yeah. Uh, we haven't really figured out where we had talked about as you come into downtown on either side of the road, but 547, you put them everywhere, right? <laughs> There's going to be a lot of flags and that That's 500 going to be nice. and that 547. I think we told you before where each flag represents a thousand deaths. So, five, you know, the 12 U.S. wars, we lost 547,646 Next book, both sides of the Civil War. Would you put them all in there? I mean, like inside that fence scenario? Is that what you're talking about? Is that, well, I was going on the edge, but yeah, that would be a really neat idea going inside too. If you feel, because I would want to protect those flags from certain. Well, we're we're going to do it a day or two before Memorial Day. I mean, you can't. No, no, but I'm I'm just worried I, about other. I I understand, but. It's going to, you hope, I don't know, I, I tell you, after, I'm pretty impressed that uh, those murals have not been vandalized, knock on wood. Um, it's great. So. Flowers. Yeah. So if there, Good. If Scott, if there are any students who think they might want to help. Uh, do you, are you, when you narrow down a day, let me know. I think, because... I think it's going to be the Friday before Memorial Day. So Memorial Day is on a Monday. Okay, I'm, I, I might be able to rally a few. We are the, that's the day before graduation. Oh, so okay. we have a significant yeah. number of things going on that okay. day. So, but we can, we can figure out. Plus I have five children. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and that's, that's, that's a lot of flag planters. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's all I have, unless you have any questions. It's in the afternoon. I'll help in, in between okay. my run. Okay. I'll be glad to help. Yeah, Friday's bad for me. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've done it. I mean, you could go in your sleep and do it. And that's it for town administration. Wow. John. We're going to announce the changes with the administration of the department? The official changes? Yeah. Um, temp official temporary ones? <laughs> temporary ones? <laughs> temporary. There's another question after we, that. We forgot to order the stripes. <laughs> Anybody got a Sharpie? <laughs> you know, they gave Jeannie stripes for everything. She looked like a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So to let the uh, public be aware, uh, our town administrator, Jeannie Forrester, is also um, the interim police administrator. And uh, Sergeant Abe Gilman has been promoted to interim lieutenant. And we're very excited to see that. And Presumably, when the uh, a new chief is hired, uh, Jeannie will just resume her role of one hat or two hats, whatever she wears at any time. After she takes a long needed vacation. Yes. <laughs> um, um, seeing as Jeannie is um, performing two jobs as administrator to your um, for the police department, you're available, kept you a lot more hours. Um, I would think that would be appropriate. I think there was some um, that in lieu of um, salary increase that possibly a vacation. Well, is that increase? Is that something that should be done in non-public? So uh, it's a, um, it's a compensation of an employee. Right. Um, Benefits. Compensation and benefits, which are all public information. Okay. All right. I wasn't I'm thinking. Sure. Um, if we were, well, no. It's public well, information, but the negotiations portion yeah, of it is not. The discussion right. surrounding it Correct. is not. Right. So we'll make a motion that we go into non public process 918 colon three personnel. Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Is it roll call? Constantino, yes. Jessamine, yes. Ira, yes. Ruggles, yes. 
Scanlon, yes. We are a non-public, and we should ask. This conference will now be recorded. And now you can hear us again. We're back. Um, do we make the announcement now? No. Okay. All right. Uh, what else is on my agenda? I thought you were making the announcement. I just asked that, and then you guys said. Yeah, yeah just, I said no. You can if you want. Oh, I don't, I don't know. If to... Out of the. Yeah. In lieu of. Yeah, and um, just to announce that, uh, in lieu of an increase in pay for um, Beanie Forrester, we are compensating her with additional vacation time. Um, which she will very much appreciate, and uh, we will make sure that she takes it. So, mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. maybe I was foreshadowing when I said we should go every other week in the summer. So you can. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Gene. Not sealing the minutes. In, no. But no. they're exactly what we just. Well, yeah, those <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what we discussed. So. Exactly what we did. All right. Any other business to come before the board? Is there anyone out there in internet land watching us live who'd like to comment? Nope, hearing none. Uh, is there any other business to come before this board? Yes, Mr. Jessman. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, the time being 7-16. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes.